These are 14 games for at least two players. Alright everyone, so before I start today, I just wanted to give a really big thank you to all the people that have subscribed. Right now we're at about 950 within the first two weeks of starting our channel, so I'm really, really excited. And I just wanted to let you guys know just how much I appreciate every single one of your subscribes. They mean the world to me and I so appreciate all the support. So moving into it, today we are going to go over 14 two-player board games that we really enjoy in our house. Just as suggestions for Valentine's Day for fun, 14, because it's February 14th. So. These are 14 games and I'm going to go ahead and get started. Okay, so our first game that we're going to go over today isn't actually a board game, it's more of a card game. And this is one of my husband's favorite games and this is Star Realms by Robert Doherty and Darwin Castle. And it's published by Wise Wizard Games. So my mom actually purchased this game back when we were living in our previous home and she brought it over to our house and introduced it to us. She hadn't ever played before and we played and instantly we were smitten. Um, this has been such a fun game for us. It's such a big hit. So in this game, you are spaceships building your fleet. There are symbols on the cards that allow you to attack or allow you to gain coins to spend money on things. It's a deck building game. And I really like that because it's a deck building game, every game is a little bit different. There are bases in here. There are ships that you can play. And the game is also fairly easy to learn, which is something that's been really nice for us. We have played this quite a few times with our friends. We have one couple that we're really close to that we used to have over and my husband would play with his buddy while I was talking with the wife and it's a really fun two-player game. So this is also a really fun game for date night. It's very nice and portable. The small box makes it easy to take places if you were going to take it to a friend's house. It's a really enjoyable game for almost everyone. I haven't had a person that we played it against yet that hasn't liked it and that is Star Realms. So the next game is a game by Antoine Baza and Bruno Cathala and it's published by Repost Production. This is a two-player game that we have that we got more recently in our collection that we really like and this is one that it's in the name. This is Seven Wonders Duel. In this deck building and card development game you are advancing your civilization as you develop your military and add to your scientific achievements. Your goal throughout the game is to gain these seven wonders and earn points through that. There's also scoring within the cards. The interesting thing about this card or this game is it's also not really like a board game. Like there's a board at the top. It's primarily a card game, but you set out your cards in specific patterns dependent on the era that you're in. And um, the cards are stacked a little bit on top of one, one another. So you're constantly like pulling cards and in some cases you'll get better options as the cards are flipped or in other cases you'll kind of get worse options to choose from. You might get stuck picking a card that you didn't want but it works you'll, and I really like that there's some long-term strategy to it and some short-term strategy where you have to kind of like deal with the punches that have been thrown to you. Each of the cards has a symbol at the top of it that allows you certain actions. Some of them they have like a brick symbol or a wood symbol that will allow you to do other things in the game. Others will have mon monetary symbols on the side that allow you to buy other cards. And overall, this is probably my favorite out of all of the Seven Wonders games. We really like it a lot. But again, we live in a household where we primarily play two player. So this wouldn't be good for anything. I mean, it's it's dual, so it's not good for anything other than two player. And I really like that this game, and this is Seven Wonders Duel. Okay, so we have as our next game. This one is also a two-player game. There is the ability to play it at three players, but it is primarily two players, and I believe it's way more fun at two players. And that is Land vs. Sea by Jean-Paul Jacques and Good Games Publishing. So in this tile placement game, you are either playing as the land or the sea or the third player, but we're not really going to talk about the third player. I'm going to focus on the, the two-player edition. And as you're playing, one person is laying out tiles to try to build their land area and make it bigger, but also you need to, at the same time, be prepared to close it off in order to score points because you don't score points unless your areas are closed. Um, and then the C person is doing the same thing where every time you place a tile, there's a land section and a C section on it, and you're trying to match up the C section with the C section, land section with land section so that you can grow, or maybe you want to cut it off so that you can get your points. Um, there are, what I like about this game too, is it's really good for intro gamers because it's a very simple style of game. It's kind of like Carcassonne, but almost like simplified. And there's also the options for more seasoned board gamers if you're more interested in like 
more intricate plays, then you can play with, there are some like more advanced tile tokens, like there are mountains or there are coral reefs that you can work with. There is like these sea monster tiles or there are caravans. Um, and, and something else that I like is it's really, it has the ability to be almost as openly competitive as you want. We've had games where it's just been really laid back and kind of chill and it kind of classifies as like a lullaby game, but we've also had games where like we just want to close off our thing and someone and like my husband keeps messing me over and making it so I can't close off, close off this really big landmass that I've been working on. And it depends on the person that you're playing with, but it has the ability to kind of swing either way. It can be a chill game or it can be a more intense game. And I really enjoy that. I think it's kind of fun to have a mix of the two in one game. And that is Land vs. Sea by Good Games Publishing. So our next game is one that I got for Mother's Day last year. And it is a game that is, we actually only just barely got around to playing it. And that is Autumn Harvest, the Tea Dragon Society card game by Josh T. McDowell and Kay O'Neill. And it's published by Renegades Game Studios. So this game is a standalone game. It can also be combined with the Tea Dragon Society game, which I have up there to create kind of like a bigger, more options available game. This is a very good almost intro game to deck building because it's not too by or cutthroat. It's kind of more chill and relaxed. You get this little dragon and you're trying to maintain your relationship with it as you're building your cards and passing through seasons and trying to gain points. I love that the little dragons have, um, some of the cards of them have like little, they have little quirks to them, right? Like some of them are picky or some of them bite and you have to watch out for those cards as they come up because they might mess you over for a turn. Um, it's not overly competitive. It can't, I mean, it has the potential to be, but it's not really. And the artwork in it is just beautiful. I really really love this artwork it's so the dragons are so so dang cute and I also love that you there are a bunch of different dragons that you can choose from and I think you can use these dragons or the dragons in the tea Dra dragon society game and you can play with them in there so you can have this little recurring cute dragon that you see in your game and that is something that I really like and that game is autumn harvest a tea dragon society card game all right, so my next game is kind of for if you're looking for maybe a rowdier night, then this might be the game for you. And that game is Bunny Kingdom by Richard Garfield and published by ELO. So I have played a ton of two-player Bunny Kingdom, and this is probably one of the games that we've gotten to the table the most just because it was one of those intro games that we really, like, it was the first game that I bought from an actual board game store. And I took it home to my mom's house and we almost instantly fell in love with it. We played it over and over and over again at nauseam borderline. And it has been such a big hit. It, it, I will warn you, it has the potential to make for really intense gameplay as far as like attitudes go. It, you, we've gotten pretty mad playing this game. Um, tables have been wiped. We have had, my mom is usually the most level-headed out of all of us, and she's probably going to kill me for bringing this up. But she um, she got so mad during scoring one time, playing with my sister and my brother-in-law, that she, she wiped the whole table. <laughs> she was so mad. And my mom doesn't do stuff like that very often, but... Um, but we've also played games. So in this game, I'll just get into it. This game is a game where you are... Um, trying to grow your bunny thief as you play cards and it's kind of like a sushi go style where you're picking up the cards it's card drafting so you pick up your cards you pick two of them to put down and then you pass your hand to the next player and then you go around in a circle picking cards and putting them down you play your cards right as you pick them unless they're long-term cards and some of the cards will allow you to place little bunnies down on certain spots on the grid and other ones will be parchment cards that go toward end of game scoring. There are camp cards or resource cards that allow you to multiply your fief by the amount of resources that you have. So those are really nice. And it's just a game. I mean, you can probably tell that this is a game that we really love. I will say we've had just some good memories playing this game. There was one time where my mom she had beat me in like five games prior to playing this round and I was getting, I don't get annoyed playing games. Like we're usually really good about just kind of, even if we get burned in a game pretty badly, we take it on the chin and we're, we don't really let it get too heated. But this game, my mom had irked me so badly by just, she had just creamed me because she's kind of a mean player. She had creamed me in the first four games and, or five games. And so, so <laughs> this game, she, I made sure, she didn't know this, but I made sure that I sat 
as the player before her who drafted cards right before her. And I didn't even play the game for me, like, that entire game. I just picked up my cards, and I would kind of eye where she was going, and I would take her cards that would go to her territory that she was obviously trying to grow, and I would play them before she could and then pass her the crappy hand. And she didn't know until after the game was over. She's like, man, I just kept pulling the worst cards this whole game. I don't understand why I'm pulling such awful cards. And I was dying the whole time because I was like, it's because I'm taking them all. <laughs> it's because because I am so annoyed and anyway needless to say I did not win that game it was not a two-player game my husband actually ended up winning but it was still kind of fun to just mess her over the whole time anyway so that's bunny kingdom it's a really fun game I love this one I can't speak highly enough about it and that is yep bunny kingdom Okay, so my next game is a little bit more of like a puzzly brain burner game, and it can play good at almost any player count just because you're mostly doing your own thing, but it has, I really like playing it at two players, and that is Calico by Kevin Russ and published by AG and Flat Out Games. Now in Calico, you have your own little quilt in front of you and you are taking tiles from a general drafting area and you are placing them into your quilt to try to score points. You have certain objective tiles that'll say things like all of the tiles around it have to be different colors or you need to have three sets of matching tiles around it color-wise or things like that. And so you take the tiles, you put them in your quilt, and once you've succeeded at certain objectives, you can put cats down on top of your quilt, and then they allow you to gain points from that. Um, there's also scoring for those objectives reached. And I really enjoy this game a lot. It's a nice one for, it's kind of almost, I wouldn't call it a lullaby game because it's a little more thinky than a lullaby game should be. This is a really cute game. I am an old lady at heart. <laughs> And I actually really love quilting. I've quilted a ton of quilt tops. And this game was one that I just had to get because it has that theme to it. And it's really, really cozy, really chill game. I think it's safe to call any game with a blanket on it a comfy game. And that is Calico. All right, so moving on from cozy games and more into kind of another battling game, we have Dice Throne by Nate Chantillier and Manny Tremblay published by Roxley Games and I believe it's also published by Mind Bottling Games. Now Dice Throne, I've talked about it before on this channel but this is a really good one for date night if you're more interested in like a competitive game where you are knocking at down the other player. It's a battle Yahtzee style game so you are rolling dice and then you're using the symbols on those dice to activate certain combos that might allow you to harm the other person or heal or to gain money or things like that so that you can buy more of your cards. This is just one edition of it. There are four copies of the season one edition and that, or you can buy like the big battle chest. We have the big battle chest of season two. And then there's also a Marvel Dice Throne and I believe they're coming out with an X-Men one. And then there's also a Dice Throne Adventure. So there's a ton of content. All the characters are different. They all play differently. They have varying levels of difficulty. So some of them are a little bit easier. I believe that in this game, they're a little more evenly matched, but there are some games where like maybe one character is a level three and one character is like a level seven difficulty. And if you pick a good pairing, you're guaranteed to have a good time as you dodge blows, deliver blows and heal. It can kind of be a little bit difficult to explain at first, but once you start playing the game, it becomes habit. It becomes pretty easy to understand what you're doing over time. And if someone could tell me, I'm gonna put a picture in like right here, and if someone could tell me what this character is, I want to know because it's on their website and I don't have it in any of my games and I want to know where did this character come from? Is it maybe an upcoming character or is it in like Dice Stone Adventures or something? You guys let me know because I'm dying to find out. I really want to know. It looks like a cool character. I really want to play it. Anyway, that is Dice Throne. So for my next game, there are quite a few different um, designers of the game so I'm not going to list them all off. I will say that one of the designers is the same person who also designed Seven Wonders Duel but this is Draftosaurus by Encama Games. Do you love drafting? Do you love dinosaurs? Because if you do, Draftosaurus is the game for you. In this game you have like a bag that's being passed around the table and you'll pull out six dinosaurs out of it. You'll look at them in your hand and you pick one, put it down, pass your hand to the next person. Now you have a board in front of you, and on this board in front of you, there are going to be various places that you can put this dinosaur to gain points. It's kind of a puzzly game. There's a lot of satisfactory end of game point calculating, and it is a fantastic game for people who are a little bit more light in the hobby. It's fairly easy to teach and really easy to learn. We've taught it to quite a few couples, and it's been a really big hit at our house. 
It's got a really fun, cute element to it. It also has a fun little board. You have another, there's another section I forgot to mention that you're rolling a dice and the dice tells you where you can place that dinosaur, what side or what area you can place it in. It's a small box game and the lack of cards makes it really portable. You don't have to really worry about anything blowing away if you're taking it outside somewhere. And I just think it's a great game for two. We've really liked playing it at that count. The components are really nice, very simple, very easy to teach, and that is Draftosaurus. Okay, so the next game, I cannot pronounce for the life of me the name of these publishers, so I'm going to try to include it in the little tabby right here. But um, this is Empires of the North, and, well, it's Imperial Settlers Empires of the North by Portal Games. So in Empires of the North, you pick a clan to play as, and you have a stack of cards that are given to you. You play out those cards selectively throughout the game, so it kind of turns into a really combo-y game and it's really satisfying as you play out the cards, you can kind of turn them and then this one activates this one and this one activates this one. And before you know it, you've got all your cards activated and you're moving on to the next round. But there's also a portion of the game where you can put your explorers out into the sea to go explore new islands and take back resources from those. There's a kind of a little bit of a farming element to it only when you activate those cards. But Overall, this is a 10 out of 10 game. We really like this one at our house, and I have only ever played it at two players. I still love it. I honestly feel like it would be a little long if you played it more than that. I could be wrong, but this is one that we really, really like. We have bought all of the expansions to it, so there are, initially, I think in this game, there are three that come with it, but you can buy all of these expansions that usually come with two or more, and there are two different decks for almost each group that you can play as, so there's... Um, there's like the Vikings, there's the Inuit girl, there's, um, there are like ancient Egyptians that you can play as, or there are, I want to say like the Japanese clan. There are basically a bunch more that you can play is what I'm trying to say. And the game, the art on the game is just adorable. Like I would so badly, I like every single card has the cutest little scene on it. Like they, and I just, every time I see it, I just think to myself, man, I would love to have a video game that's based off of this where I could go in this cute little world and just discover all of these little different scenes. It's adorable. I can't tell you enough how cute it is. But that is Imperial Settlers Empires of the North. Okay, so for my next game, we have Trails by Henry Audubon and published by Keymaster Games. Now in Trails, this is kind of a parks adjacent game where it has a lot of a similar mechanisms to parks, but it's just kind of a simpler play gameplay. You are, you have your little hiker still and you're moving your hiker along the trail to gain certain resources as they land on certain spaces. Along the way, you're also trying to take pictures or see wildlife and those elements help you to gain points in the end. You take cards for that. There are little acorns that you can get or stones or leaves and it's just a really cute little game. The art in it is just phenomenal. It's almost identical to the park's art. I love the look of this game. I love how the game plays. I feel like it's very fluid. It's very simple and it's so much easier to teach new people to the board game hobby than Parks is. Even though Parks isn't all that bad, this is a lot lighter. I love that the game is small and portable and it's great at two players. And this is just one that I have really enjoyed playing with my mom. She loves playing this one as well, and that is Trails. Okay, so my next game is another game that I've only played at two players, and it's one that we have really liked playing more recently. It's seen a lot of table time, and that is Res Arcana by Tom Lemon and published by Sandcastle Games. So in Res Arcana, this is an engine building game where you have a set deck that you're given at the beginning. Well, you're shuffled and you're given a deck at the beginning, and you select a mage to play with that deck, and you dive into this world of Res Arcana that's all about like potions and essence and dragons. And as you're playing your cards out, what I think is really interesting about this game that sets it apart from other engine building games is you are limited by the amount of cards available to you, but you have to really figure out how to manage these cards correctly because if you don't, you're never gonna get any points. The essence can, like I've had games where I have no essence at all, hardly at all. Like I can't get any more essence tokens or I've had games where all I'm doing is like activating my dragon over and over and over again. And it's a very interesting style game. You're very limited in it, but in a good way. Like it's a very thinky game. It's very good at two players. 
and I cannot speak highly enough about it. It's very interesting to see how different people's brains work with the game. And I love that every game is a little bit different. Like you're playing the same Res Arcana, you're taking the little tile at the beginning to tell you what you can gain on your turn. And then you're using it in a seven wondersy way to try to buy some of the bigger cards. But you are so, you have to strategize so well to really optimize your turns. And I just think it's such a good idea. It's very limiting and that can be hard for some people to get over. It's really cool though. And that is Res Arcana. So another two player board game that we've played quite a bit of is Van Life by Simon Russell and Ridley's Games. Now in this game, you are a little Volkswagen traveling around this map that's kind of comical. It has these funny little nicknames for all of the places that you go. And there are cards laid out at the bottom of the board and each player is given two tokens. Now with these two tokens, you can place them on the cards and that activates certain actions throughout the game where you can maybe move your van twice or you can take other cards to put in your hand. And you're working to get these objective cards that you have in your hand that you're trying to play like, oh, this card is a red and a green card or this one is a red and a blue card and I need to fulfill red, green, and blue on one card so I need to be able to play those both. Um, it's a very light game, uh, in my opinion. This is one that we classify as a lullaby game. It's kind of a chill game that you can play right before bed. It's a wind down game and we've really liked it. It's been fun to play with other people. We played it with my husband's family when they were here and it was fun. My only little dig on it is that the board itself is a little, at least mine, is a little wonky. And I wish that it was a little bit of a sturdier board. However, outside of that, it's a really fun, simple game that's not overly complicated for people who are just learning how to play games or just getting into the hobby a little bit more. It's great at two players, and that is Van Life. So my next game is one that we have played a ton of. This was a game that we played during Christmas time, um, and this is... Walk and Roll, designed by Daryl Chow and published by Aura Game. So in this game, this is a roll and write game where you are rolling your dice to try to check off items on your menu to gain points. You have this little menu that's placed out in front of you with these super cute little icons on them. And you're checking those off. I like that this game offers you a basic game for maybe newer gamers, but then there's a little bit more of an advance. It's still pretty light. But there's some more advanced rules for people who've played Roll and Rights before, people who are more familiar with games overall. You are a restaurant, and we've played this at many different player counts, and it's always been a hit. I really like it at two players. It's kind of more of those one of those chill games where you're rolling the dice, and then you are doing your own thing on your own map, and then you're comparing yours with someone else's at the end of the game. See how high they, what did they check off? How did they get points on theirs as opposed to yours? Whenever we get together with my husband's family, we, there always seems to be like, I, I try to introduce them to a lot of games, but there's always seems to be one that stands out every time. Last Christmas, it was Century Golem Edition, and we probably played like 40 games of Century Golem Edition. And this Christmas, it was Walk and Roll. We played a ton of Walk and Roll, and my mother-in-law loved this game, and so did my sister-in-law. We played this over and over and over again, and it's so fun. It's a really good game to play with new gamers, and it's great at two players, and that is Walk and Roll. So my next game is a little bit more of an intense game from Walk and Roll. It definitely, well, it's definitely a more intense game from Walk and Roll. It's another engine builder, and that is Aquatica by Ivan Tujovsky and Cosmodrome Games. So in Aqu Aquatica, this is another engine building game. You have this board out in front of you. You have these plastic manta rays to the side of you, and you have this really cool board in front of you. I haven't seen any mechanism quite like this, but as you're collecting your cards and adding them to your deck and playing them out strategically, there is an element of sliding. So there's this board that's got that's sandwiched with another board and there's a gap in between and you slide your cards up on the board in order to unlock certain goals. And I think it's supposed to represent like diving deeper into the into the sea. You are playing as the king trying to build up in your kingdom to glory. I love the strategy in the game and I love I love the sliding up the board thing. It is so fun to try to figure it all out. I've heard that it's kind of hard to find right now. We've owned this copy for four years, I want to say. It's gotten some good play out of it, but it is a beautiful game too. I mean, the colors on the board, so like this color, they're all very like dark and dark and vibrant can be a thing at the same time. I just love it. I think it's such a fun game. And it plays, I have only played it at two player. And we have had a blast. It's so fun. And that is Aquatica. 
I just wanted to, before I wrap up one more time, say thank you so much to every subscriber that we have. You guys really mean the world to me. And to all of you guys that have been on VGA trying to teach me how to play games, thank you so much for that. It has been so helpful. I appreciate every single one of you out there. Thank you so much for supporting me. It means the world. If you'd like to see more content from us, click here to see our latest video and click here to be taken to our channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell to get notifications when we've uploaded new content. And I hope to see you again here in the After Even Fall community.